In emergencies, events can spiral out of control in a matter of seconds. Immediate intervention by emergency services can mean the difference between life and death. Tonight, police rushed to save a suicidal man. We managed to cut the cord off and around his neck. A house fire endangers the lives of young children. And team policing move en masse as the party threatens to turn violent. That's one night in Auckland responding to 111. Constables Ali and Mark are rushing to save a life. After arguing with his family, a young man has climbed onto a motorway overbridge and is threatening to jump. Five police cars and an ambulance are speeding to Mount Roskill to try to prevent a tragedy. The young man has been grabbed from the bridge and secured. I just want to die. Why do you want to talk stupid like that for? Because. Because what? The world. Hey, you had a you had a mess up with your brother. Yeah. 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 And what you want to take? And it's worth taking yeah. your own life. Yeah, because you don't know what happened. Well, what can, happened? What can, can be my that bad hey, oh, oh, for sorry. you to take your own sorry, life? Sorry, ma'am. Ma yeah? Sorry, ma'am. Sorry, ma'am. Would you be able to give my hat, please? What colour is your hat? If police had arrived just seconds later, the man would almost certainly be dead. We could see him standing on the railing up there. Mm. And when we got up there, um, he's tied, uh, I think it's a jumper, around his neck and to the railing and was trying to jump off. We managed to cut the cord off him around his neck and drag him back down to the car. But he's still uh, quite agitated at this stage. Hey, hey, hey do you want to... Are you going to give me your name if I put yes, it on? I will. Yeah? Yeah. No, 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 not that way. I don't like that hat, baby. Which way? Backwards, please. My mom's arm got dislocated, right? From and tonight? Yeah. Yeah, and everyone thinks it was my fault. To be honest, I'm a babe. I didn't even touch my mom. Mm. My brother, he broke out and tried to get my mom away from him. And now, look, everyone thinks it's my fault, like always. Another critical emergency is unfolding in Mount Roskill. Fire dispatcher Mal responds immediately. Mount Roskill 621, Belmoral 611, house fire. The fire crews take just minutes to get to the house and find the top story engulfed in flames. While one crew braves the stairwell to reach the blaze, out back, another crew makes a terrifying discovery that requires the help of police. Okay, rotate drop details. We've got a house fire, fire already in attendance. So a bedroom that's been at gutted out. A four-year-old and an 11-year-old were home alone at the time. All are out of the house. What do While constables Brad and Seamus head to the house, dispatcher Celeste hands over to Aroha. Four-year-old and 11-year-old were home alone. Yeah. Four-year-old's been playing with matches, gutted out of bedroom. Parents are not home. Despite Ali's attempts to calm him down, the young man is still threatening suicide. After being checked by an ambulance crew, he'll be taken back to the police station to keep him safe. Ellie uh, is sitting in the back of another car with him. Uh, she seemed to um, be able to calm him down quite well, so she's um, volunteered to go with him uh, just to keep him calm on the way back to the station. Back at the station, Ellie organises a full psychiatric assessment of the distraught young man. Suicide now claims more lives than road accidents and early intervention by emergency services halts hundreds more suicide attempts every year. The pace to try and build a rapport at an early stage, it just makes the whole transition easier. I picked up he was Samoan, so I threw in a few Samoan words there just um, to help keep him calm. The only thing he seemed to care about was his green cap. And um, if I threatened to take it off him, you know, he'd calm right down. With the young man safe under the care of mental health services, Ali and Mark can return to patrol. Back at the house fire, firefighters make a shocking discovery. There were not just two children present, eight kids have been left home alone. All managed to scramble to safety, but without the quick actions of the fire crews, Station Officer Bruce knows the outcome would have been catastrophic. The whole of this upper floor was well involved when we arrived. If we weren't sure at that stage whether there was people inside or not. The cause of the fire appears to be children playing with matches. There was no early warning 
there was no smoke alarms installed. Another 30 seconds and there would have been a loss of life. A very narrow escape. The children's parents are in for a terrible shock as they return to find their house destroyed by fire and one child in hospital. Police need to ask the hard questions. So Brad grills the parents while Seamus interviews extended family members. Did you go away and leave the kids there? Uh, it's a misunderstanding. Someone must have been the last one to leave and left the kids there. Do you know what I mean? You didn't think to check? No wonder it's burnt down, eh? With the top story completely gutted, the family is going to have to find somewhere else to sleep tonight. As the fire crew secure the scene, Brad and Seamus try to get to the bottom of why the parents left their children home alone. Adults have all had choir practice tonight at church. The two of them have left in one car, and then the other two have left uh, maybe 15, 20 minutes later in another car, uh, both thinking that the others were staying home to look after the kids. So, yeah, they've left the eight kids at home on their own, and they're all aged 11 or 12 and under. One young boy went through the hospital with smoke inhalation, but he's fine. He's running around like crazy. And uh, the rest are all fine, which is uh, very lucky considering there's no adults there. Brad and Seamus will head to the hospital to check on the boy and will then decide whether to charge his parents. St John Ambulance Emergency Medical Dispatcher Derek is responding to a 111 call about an assault. Scene safe. Um, Incident happened elsewhere. Derek dispatches Jill and Sean. We're heading to Henderson for a 23-year-old male. Um, the details we've got is that he's, he's been assaulted sometime earlier this evening and has got an injury to his eye. Waiting so long to call an ambulance could prove to be a painful mistake. At police comms, a 111 call taker is struggling to elicit details from a panicked and distracted caller. This is the police, where's your emergency? Uh, we just had an intruder into our house. Okay, you didn't know this person? No, 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 no. We don't know him. So we, we just came in the front of the room and then he, he just jumped out of the window and he's outside, yeah. Okay, so were you in the house at the time? Yeah, we were in the house. Can you give me a description of what he looked like? Huh? Can you give me a description? No. Hey! Yes, just a moment, please. While the call taker speaks to the informant, he messages details of the intrusion to Aroha, who dispatches patrol cars and a Delta dog unit. Data 17. Oh, 10 to from uh, Blockers Bay. Roger, BLI 25, can you attend the scene? Sorry, Tom's BLI, is there any discussion? Still coming through at this stage, driver. If there's any chance of catching the burglar, the patrol cars are going to need a description from the informant. Possible birds on um, in the dressing Mount Possible. Uh, there was a male who was disturbed. Um, he's now jumped out of a window. Just going to keep the um, sirens off. We don't want uh, to alert him to be on our way. Sean and Jill have been called to a house in West Auckland to assist a man whose eye has been injured during an assault. My name's Jill from the ambulance. Sean's with me. How long ago did this happen? About two or three hours ago. OK. And has it just got worse, Is it? Can you not open it now? Can you try and open it for me? The man can't bear to look into the light. He's in so much pain. It's all good shot. Once that's sore, mate, we'd better oh, get you up to then. the docks to have a look at it. They give you something to numb it so they can have a good look. All right. Is so that you don't know injury? what it was that got stuck in it? Finger. You don't know what they the finger was, finger it? In it. Yeah. While Jill and Sean treat the man, police interview an eyewitness to the attack. The guy that did it, I don't know who he is. I've just seen him for the first time today. Even though he's in agony, the patient is nervous that leaving the house will be breaching his own bail conditions. You're not going to get breached no, for going to the hospital. You've got to get your eyes sorted out, and the sooner the better, man. Chasing a burglar is proving a bumpy ride for Brad and Seamus. The homeowner has finally provided a description of the burglar. We're looking for a male race unknown wearing a red coloured top. He's jumping through properties. Comms AVI 25 V in section Stoddard and Sandringham. Roger AVI 25. While Mark and Ellie await instructions from Aroha, Brad, Seamus and the dog unit try to get more information from the homeowner. Just recently we had somebody come into the house. Maybe this guy is uh, coming back again. Yeah. I was downstairs in my, I don't know, waste cleaning up there, and uh, so somebody jumped out through the window. 
he had already been and seen that we had nothing. So I suppose he's gone to find some greener pasture. <laughs> So what's happened is one of our dog handlers has gone to the scene to see if he can get a track and um, ourselves and some of our, the other police units around the area are just sitting at different um, cordons, I guess you'd call it, around the scene um, to see if we can see him. And uh, the idea is that he doesn't get that far so the dog can track to where he's, uh, where he's gone. You can't be expecting any of your people to be sleeping now. No. Right. But he's brave enough to come into your house, you know. He won't be back tonight, I pretty much guarantee that. Yeah, so. He's scared off nicely, I'd say, when he sees the police cars. But the homeowner would prefer some extra protection. Mm. You want to leave me at a teaser or something? Mm. OK. Yeah. <laughs> he won't be getting left a taser, but he can rest assured the intruder is likely to be long gone, fleeing the tracking Delta dog unit. Delta 17, go ahead. Yes, the staff here with me. Sorry, confirm my start at this stage. Roger, AVI 25, cover, you can stand down. With the dog unable to pick up a scent, the only hope now is the crime scene investigators will locate the intruder's fingerprints when they return in the morning. Sean and Jill are preparing to take their patient to hospital. A vicious eye gouge attack has left him with a sore eye and a blinding headache. Were you knocked out? No? You're normally fit and well. OK. Now we're in a little bit dimmer light. Can I have a look? OK. So it hurts to try and open it, does it? When you open it, what's your vision like? Yeah, but what's the vision like when you open it? Is it blurry? Uh, status 3, white hickory. Bridge copy, status 3, white hickory. Uh, status status three, 3 indicates the patient's injuries are considered moderate. The vision out of the other eye is OK? Yeah? yeah? OK. Doctors will need to conduct tests to see if his vision has suffered any permanent damage. The team in the emergency department are going to assess the patient's eye. They'll be able to pop some drops in it and hopefully give him some pain relief so they can assess it properly. The story that we got is that he's been assaulted at home by somebody who's forced a finger or a thumb quite deep into his eye socket and has held it there for a little while. It happened quite a, quite a while ago, several hours ago, so obviously as the swelling has got worse, they've decided now that it's more serious and they phoned for some advice who uh, responded us to the job. He uh, wasn't very keen to talk about the incident with us. While he is treated, police will attempt to track down his attacker. Constables Dan and Matt are patrolling their downtown patch when they spot a familiar face from the K Road red light district. You've got bail conditions, Mr. I'm going home. Well, where's home? Back to GI. I'm walking on my the thing is, I have seen you for the last two hours on the corner of East Street. I then saw you walking down to Charlie's Bar. Yeah. I've now seen you on this street. Your only condition is to be in the city if you're going to work at Charlie's yeah. Bar. So why were you hanging around on East Street a couple of hours ago? Then you're walking down to the bar. Now you're walking down here. I don't believe you for one minute that you're going home. I've been waiting for my ride to come, and since they haven't come, I now have to ask around for money. If I put you in the car now, we went to Charlie's Bar, would they be able to confirm for me that you were working today? I'm not sure. You're not sure? That's a no, then. I think you have to come in for breach of bail idea, because I don't think you're going to be hanging around here for any other reason but working, doing Do you something want to else. Take me home, then? I don't want to take you home. I want to arrest you for breach of bail. You've got bail conditions not to be coming into town. Yeah, unless I'm going to work right. But you just told me Charlie's Bar not going to be able to confirm you're working, so I, I, you're obviously lying to me. So if you want to put your hands behind your back, you're under arrest for breach of bail. Oh, my gosh. Dan suspects she has been soliciting, which isn't illegal, but it does violate her court-imposed bail conditions. Follow me. To search her, a female police officer is required. Comms on, look, watch house. Could you try and sort out a female officer? We're still waiting for one of the watch house. DDB17. Yeah, I'll head up. Roger, thanks. Our female has been processed through the watch house. All the paperwork's been done. She'll stay here overnight and be transported to court tomorrow to appear before a judge. As the night wears on, alcohol is fueling the tempest of some South Auckland partygoers. Concerned residents have alerted police to fighting, so Murphy calls all available units. Comms on us if you want for any staff near Gossamer Drive, Pakuranga, for a uh, party that's out of control, persons are fighting. There's a job in Gossamer Driver, party getting out of control. 
So we're just gonna head that way now and see where it takes us. All too often, minor fights can erupt into mass street brawls. So a convoy of police race to the party. Constables Mark and Silao are helping to shut down an out of control party in South Auckland. There's been a couple of bosses go into the address, have a look around. They'll be able to give us a yeah, accurate update on what actually is going on out there. It seems the trouble started when a fight broke out over a woman. When police arrest her boyfriend, she unleashes her fury. Hey, don't do anything about him protect me. Is it not okay if I'm right, me? If you want to join them, oh, that's okay. Excuse she's wanted to just jump in your car and start leaving. We have a car. One way to stop smoking, but a patch might have been easier. Shut up. No, I'm meant to drive. Yep. When he's been oh, for two reasons, drive. We can walk. The officers that went into the address seen something. They were satisfied that uh, he needed to be arrested. She is uh, cooperating, she is moving, but Let's go, guys, start moving. moving. As you okay. notice, your friends were trying to keep her moving. So even in a group like this, you still get people that um, see sense in the uh, whole situation. Just ones who have had a bit of intoxication about them. And now we've just had the team policing unit turn up, so things might change again. The only way this neighbourhood's going to get any sleep is if the party goers are forcibly marched out. A second arrest for disorderly behaviour shows the crowds that the police mean business. Party goers slowly start to get the message and begin to head home. They mouthed off somewhat, but they still moved themselves down the road and they still got themselves where we wanted them to go. A little bit of effort, but it achieved the result. Several concerned motorists have called police to report a young woman being chased down the road by a male. Got a 17-year-old female, she's uh, run away from her partner on Browns, she's running in the middle of the road. Uh, Concerns for her safety, she's uh, very 1K. 1K is code for drunk. The informant's lost obs on her on Bellbrook. Female Moddy, brown leather jacket. Blue dress, no shoes. Slim build. Uh, long brown hair and a ponytail. And five foot five height. I believe the informant is at the intersection of Browns and Felbrook uh, still looking for her. Constables Chris and Catherine find the girl sheltering with a member of the public. They need to find out why she was fleeing from her partner. What's been going on? Um, no, we just had a little argument at a party. I saw him, him with a chick and then I went out and talked to him. And then, um, he didn't come out with me, so I just walked out. And then I went in the second time, he didn't come out with me, so I just ran out. And then he just followed me down the street, that's all. I just didn't want to see him. But he's not, like, he hasn't been violent towards me. Oh, OK. He's just drunk and... OK. Yeah. A bit of jealousy and all that thing yeah. going on, OK. She's running up the road and you're chasing her, OK? Oh, yeah, no, I know what it looks right. like, but... You know yeah, what, no, the members no. of the public, we've oh, had yeah, three no, no, calls no. of a guy chasing someone up the yep. road. No, no, I understand okay. that. I'm just, I'm worried so about what's the safety. So what's the main reason this has gone on tonight? Um, I'm not too, I'm not exactly sure. She's had a lot to drink, I'm telling you that. You guys had an argument at all, or...? Um, yeah, but the mm. subject changes... Off changes, yeah. yeah. Because you both both been drinking? Yeah, I've been drinking. I yeah. see that. I've been drinking. Yeah. Tell you what, I'll drop you around the Once we've got your details, I'll drop you around the corner to make yep. sure you get there okay. Oh, yeah, yep, cool. And then these guys can make sure your lady gets home safe, all right? Yep. But then it's a sensible way of doing it. Calm down, everything's sweet, and then you discuss it in the morning, eh? Relieved he's off the hook, the guy's concern moves to his girlfriend. He's worried she could be charged. She's not coming to the city, is she? No, home? no. Okay, she's, done, she's done nothing wrong. Yep, cool. Right, right, it's not illegal no, to run down the street, no, eh? That, Assured it was just a lover's tiff rather than a case of domestic violence, Chris and Catherine will drop the barefooted teenager home. While patrolling the central city, Constables Graham and Sean spot a familiar car. It's a vehicle owned by um, a well-known drug user and drug dealer, I guess. We might stop him and have a talk. The shriek of sirens is no doubt a familiar sound to this guy. Hey, How you going? Have you got your licence with you there? Uh, no, I haven't. You haven't? Where else is your licence? Um, it's uh, lost somewhere. This counts 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. He passes the alcohol breath test, but it's drugs that Graham and Sean are most interested in. So you've got no ID? Nothing to prove who you are? I might have a bag of Graham takes the opportunity to sneak a peek. 
while Sean checks his criminal record and finds the man has just been released from prison. Pretty serious charges. Oh, they are, right? yeah. Yeah. Giving up that sort of lifestyle? Yeah. One day clean, first day. You know you're on a restricted license and you're driving after your hours and you know you're supposed to carry it around with you, OK? You're so right you are, you're arguing an infringement for both of that, OK? Yeah. $100 for the restricted driver, 55 for failing to produce your driver's license. So you need to go home because yeah. you're already outside your hours. Whether or not he was carrying drugs will remain a mystery. We'd love to search the car, but without any um, sight of anything that's um, illegal, then we, 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 we can't. He's obviously just gotten out of jail and probably doesn't want to go back again, so... He says it's his second day clean, so reform to <laughs> drug addict, maybe. <laughs> After fully investigating the circumstances leading up to the house fire, police decided not to charge the parents. Police concluded it was a genuine mistake and a communication breakdown that led to the children being left home alone. A crime scene examination failed to find any fingerprints of the Mount Roskill intruder. And the disorderly party goers spent the night in the cells cooling off and were released without charge the following morning.